great to be here. I'll just quickly share my screen and we'll get rocking and rolling. Great. So thanks, everybody. Delighted to be here. Um, let's, uh, let's just jump right in. Um, my name's Mark Sparvel. I'm with uh, Microsoft Education. As Hannah said, I've been teaching 25 years. I've been working with Microsoft for the last eight years where I'm involved in education marketing. If we're not following one another, let's fix that up. You can see on the screen, I've included my Twitter handle. Feel free to tweet out any screenshots uh, from this session. And also there's a couple of other links. One is a community that I founded on Facebook, which is the Cell and Edu community. That's got around about 20, um, 25, 27,000 people involved who are interested in the best practice and next practice when it comes to social and emotional learning. So feel free to follow me. I'll be happy to keep track with you. I'd like to start off just with a thank you. As a former educator and a school leader working across Australia and then globally for at least the last 15 years, I know that it's a job that's unique to any other profession because it comes with an emotional toil. The truth is that schools are social places and learning is a social process. It's something best done together. And because of that, as educators, we get the good things, lost teeth, people learning to read and write, but then we also get lots of challenges. And certainly the last couple of years have shown us uh, how resilient resourceful and creative educators across the globe have been as they've met the challenges of moving to remote and hybrid modes of learning, dealing with trauma, with loss and stress, which continues to this day. So a huge thank you to all of educators out there for investing some time today. We're going to look at some tools and we're going to have a little bit of fun along the way. As I said, learning is a social process. It's something best done together. And because of that, emotions matter greatly. They literally act as gatekeepers to motivation, why we do what we do, attention, where we choose to place our scarcest resource, and also how we process information of the world around us, our cognition. So emotions act as a gatekeeper to those. We know that in the best of times, Schools are an emotional roller coaster. Um, when I left teaching after 25 years, the biggest surprise working in a corporate environment was that there wasn't somebody crying in my office every single day, whether it was a teacher, a parent, a child, someone was always crying. Schools are an emotional roller coaster. Again, emotional intelligence matters greatly here. Now, I work for Microsoft Education and one of the things that we're really excited about is some of the new developments that are coming to life through Kahoot. They published a blog a couple of days ago highlighting three quite incredible new features which are being powered by Microsoft's Azure OpenAI. So these features included things like um, a new search engine, uh, semantic search, which takes advantage of um, takes advantage of the one billion questions and the hundreds and thousands of quizzes available in Kahoot makes it easier to search. A new advanced brainstorming features, which can automatically categorize brainstorm categories and put them together. So if we ask a question around what's a great strategy to uh, improve happiness and a whole bunch of people had listed going for a walk, it would automatically categorize those for you does a lot of the heavy lifting. So improved search, improved brainstorming, and the most exciting feature of all, auto quiz generation. If you've been like me, you're a substitute teacher, you've suddenly got to take a class, you want to have an engaging brainstorm, you know they've been studying, I don't know, parts of the brain. Rather than sitting there for a sweaty 30 minutes building a beautiful Kahoot, you can actually lean on the generative AI functionality to create that for you. And you can always edit it, of course. This is about empowering educators and giving educators time back to do the things that matter most to them, building and sustaining relationships. So there's a couple of awesome features which are coming out in Kahoot, um, powered by Microsoft's 
uh, Azure Open AI service, which is really cool. I always like to start with a uh, an emotion check-in. It's a tricky question though, because we don't feel one thing at once. We often experience bipolarity of emotions. We can be excited and anxious. We can be terrified and also um, anticipating something. We can feel proud and guilty at the same time. So it is tricky asking, how are you feeling? Sometimes it's better to ask people about the energy they're feeling or whether it's pleasant or unpleasant or what are some of the emotions that you're feeling. But let's imagine we were going to ask you to have a quick emotion check-in using one of these beautiful emotion uh, characters called Feeling Monsters. So I've got the T-shirt on here. Just have a little bit of a look. You can pop it into your text chat. I'm sure Hannah could summarize. But how might you be feeling today? Pick one of those feeling monsters, one to nine. These are part of a collection of 51 feeling monsters, which you'll be introduced to in a moment, available in Kahoot and also available in Microsoft Teams as part of our Reflect tool. So there's the cute feeling monsters just for a moment. A lot of people are feeling feeling monsters number six, Mark. I just <laughs> like warm and fuzzy feelings of happiness. We see, I'm seeing some fours of like, I can do it sort of things too. That's awesome. That's great. Super cute, those feeling monsters. I could make a fortune selling the t-shirts. Emotion check-ins are important because they signal to people an intent to pause and reflect. Um, and the word reflect, by the way, by the way, is a Latin root word, which means to bend back, right? So when we reflect, we literally bend back. Introducing tools like an emotion wheel can help students develop and expand their emotional vocabulary. We call that emotional granularity. And it's really important because you have to name it to tame it. So this is a great example because it starts off with simple emotions in the center and they become more granular as they move out. So asking how people feel is great. Introducing more complex language to be able to accurately label emotions is better. Another example, this one from the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, um, asks students to plot whether an emotion is pleasant feeling or on the y-axis it's energy level. So uh, a high energy unpleasant emotion might be rage. Um, a pleasant low energy emotion might be content. So you can see you've got to stop and think because the world isn't happy, sad, angry, mad. It's, it's a hundred emotions in between. Here's something super cool you can do with this in Kahoot. You can take it and drop it into a Kahoot as a drop pin activity and undertake a very quick emotion check-in with your class, with your students, uh, asking them to possibly just indicate the level of pleasantness or unpleasantness or energy high or low and use that to kick off a conversation. It's a quick, incredibly easy emotion check-in powered by Kahoot, just as an alternative for you to think about. It's my number one favorite tool at the moment to tell you the truth, I'm obsessed by it. So I mentioned the cute feeling monsters and reflect. So there's a website at the bottom that explains them. It's a tool which allows a teacher to collect subjective well-being information, how a student is feeling about friendships, how they're feeling about their work, how they're feeling about their progress. And it reflects back to the students a journal of their emotion check-ins. So over time, they can see that their emotions fluctuate. And trivia fact for the next trivia night, the word emotion means literally to be in motion because they're constantly fluctuating. But for students, often they think that how they're feeling now is how they're always going to feel. The truth is emotions fluctuate based on internal and external forces, and we can develop the skills to navigate our emotions and also navigate social situations, the emotions of others. So the Reflect Cute Feeling Monsters don't just sit inside of Microsoft Teams. We've made them available through videos you can watch in a free world in Minecraft where the students chase after the emotions, catch them, categorize them and put them into an emotion organizer. They're available in PowerPoint and Flip as a sticker pack, but also available in Kahoot, which is really awesome. And I'm going to show you 
a couple of things to do with that. One thing is really handy is to actually embed a Kahoot directly inside a PowerPoint. So if you were creating a lesson for a virtual class or you were creating something to project up onto the big screen, you can do that directly within your PowerPoint presentation. What I'm doing is I'm just searching for an Office add-in and I'm searching for Kahoot. I found it there. So I'm going to add Kahoot and it's now going to be a persistent part of PowerPoint. It's going to sit there in my toolbar. You can see that it's created a new slide and what it's waiting for me to do now is to paste the link to the Kahoot quiz directly within there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flip out into my Kahoot. I'm going to have a look through the premium collections. I found the Microsoft collection and sitting within there is all the goodness of the feeling monsters available for free. You can see 1.7 million players. There's been about 500,000 game plays. There's a range of professional development activities. There's also obviously quizzes wrapped around different things connected to emotions, how to manage stress, express gratitude. Also available in uh, Hebrew, Spanish and Dutch alongside English with more languages we're contemplating coming. But let's pick one of those to get its unique address and maybe uncomfortable or comfortable or maybe just expressing feelings. We'll tap, grab that one. So we'll grab this quiz. You can see we've got the classic summary of the questions. I'm going to copy out that unique address. And then all I have to do is swap back into PowerPoint, paste it. And then when I hit present, it's ready to go. So that is- I just wanna make sure that we're seeing the right screen with you. That all of these steps are so helpful and so important in any kind of classroom context and experience. And I know everyone else really wants to follow along. We're seeing what looks like a editable PowerPoint screen. I'm wondering if That's you were showing us- Okay, just wanted to make sure that we oh, were, no. we yeah, were in I'm the right spot. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to put it in the presentation mode because then you wouldn't see the uh, the tools. No what you should see, thanks for checking. Yeah, that's okay. What you can see now though is the present view where within PowerPoint, the quiz is opening up like you would expect into classic mode and it's ready to go. So what it would look like from this point of time is just like you're playing Kahoot. This is just embedded though within PowerPoint. Here's a feeling monster. He started a new school hasn't met anyone yet, how might the monster be feeling? Could be a number of correct answers, anxious and lonely perhaps. And then you can get uh, a little prompt which can kick off a great discussion for the start of the school year. We've also intentionally made it appreciative. This isn't about feeling isolated, left out and sad. It's also understanding how pleasant emotions work, low energy and high energy pleasant emotions. So, what might have helped Feeling Monster feel included in this situation? Again, the aim of the game here isn't to teach social and emotional learning, it's to provide educators with a tool to kickstart a conversation. Another thing that I'll just call out, and I won't run this all, but you're looking at my incredibly messy Teams screen here, but the same thing happens with Kahoot within Teams. So I can search for the Kahoot app, I can add it to my team, and I can use that with my team of educators. Uh, in this case, I'm going to add it to my Microsoft internal team, the growth and incubation team. It's as exciting as you could imagine. And what we're going to end up with is a Kahoot directly sitting within our team's channel. And that's what I love about this. One of the things for a busy teacher is you don't want to always be heading out to something else. It's nice to have everything in one place. So within Teams, I can have my Kahoot then PowerPoint, I can have my Kahoot um, and it works beautifully. And you'll see exactly this happening now. I'm going to grab one. I literally grabbed and used this Kahoot with my team. I've got sitting on the top rail, I've now got Kahoot and I can just simply drop and run a Kahoot directly within Teams. It's genius. Let's jump on. Looking at social and emotional learning resources within the Kahoot library, thank goodness for the new AI powered semantic search because there's a lot of goodness. There's piles of courses and you can see just a snapshot here of social and emotional learning 
courses available to support busy educators sitting inside of Kahoot. There's the, uh, the Feeling Monster one sitting there, but you can see we've got Sell with Kahoot Academy. Plus also we've got the Kahoot quizzes themselves. So awesome quizzes from Empatico on perspective taking or cooperation. I played around with this one that, that I think a user generated, uh, which is using the Castle framework uh, to help better understand self-awareness, self-management, what responsible decision-making, social awareness looks like and feels like. So there's some great cahoots available, ready to go, ready to use with your staff and certainly with your students too. We know that for all edged students, like any grown up, any human, we've got some pretty basic needs to be seen, to be heard, to belong, to have the power to contribute, if you like, to have voice and choice and agency. And one of the exciting things about technology right now is it gives every learner the best seat in the house. It gives every learner the tools they have to be seen, to have a voice, to feel connected, and to have a chance to contribute their big ideas. That's what excites me in the work that I do in Microsoft each and every day is leveraging technology tools and tools like Kahoot to give every student that best seat in the house. And we know that the greatest potential for technology is really about humanizing learning, making sure that students enjoy, feel seen and heard and have a part to play in shaping their future. It's not just about creating digital content. Some follow-ups to consider uh, after this, because we're just about on time. You can get more of the good stuff around social and emotional learning from Microsoft and Microsoft partners, or mostly for free at aka.ms forward slash SEL. Join the community that I founded and I run with Committee for Children, Cell and Edu. Join the 30,000 people sharing best and next practice. And of course, follow me on Twitter or catch up with me via my blog. I put a star there because I put 50 must use chat GPT prompts are sitting in my blog at the moment. Uh, so if you're interested in generative text and prompt literacy, be sure to check out the blog. That's all I've got for you friends at Kahoot. It's been a pleasure sharing with you. Hopefully there's been some useful tips and tricks. 